What's up guys? Welcome back to Samojo Homestead. We've got a nice weekend. Yeah. We've been working. Yeah. We've been getting some stuff done. Yeah. Kind of a clean up weekend around the homestead. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to give you guys a garden update. Yeah. I mean our first one. You know, right. there's not too much going on harvest wise, but it's there's growing. some stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's growing, it's coming yeah. along. And also wanted to talk about fire blight. If you don't know what that is, it is probably the number one killer of fruit trees. So if you have fruit trees and you aren't familiar with that, be sure you don't miss us talking about that. Yeah. Because it will wipe them out. Yeah. So if you have any questions about anything we talk about today, the fire blight, the garden, um, be sure you leave those in the comment section below. We love commenting and um, interacting with you guys and like subscribe, share us with your friends on social media. All of that will help us to share our knowledge with more people. Yeah, definitely. So would you like to do the garden update? Yeah, let's go check out the garden. Yes. So one thing I'm super excited about are these cucumber plants. We have some little baby cucumbers growing. We actually have a lot of them. I don't know if you can see this one but there are several on this plant. We actually didn't get a lot of cucumbers last year. Um, we had them in a different location in the garden. They just didn't do well, but they are really thriving here. Here's a bigger one. It's easier to see. There's one there. They're just really doing well. And we eat a lot of pickles and relish. This specifically is a pickling cucumber. So I'm really excited that it is so happy in our raised bed. So another thing I'm really excited about in the garden are these Sea Island red beans. We had them in the garden last year and we planted them late because we actually got them from another homesteader, homesteading in the city. And even though we planted them late, they were super prolific and we just had tons of them. They were growing all throughout the fall. They did a great job in our climate. So. We went ahead and got them in so we can get as many of them as we possibly can. They are a dried bean, so we, you let them dry on the plant and then you take them off and they can store through the winter. Our main garden space this weekend, what we really want to do is kind of take an assessment of what's doing well and how many of each plant we have and go ahead and beef up our garden. We um, planted some from seed. Some of those aren't doing as well. Our squash, not all of our squash are doing as well as we would like. So um, we want to plant some more of those. I also am a big fan of succession planting. I want to go ahead and plant and then in a few, four to six weeks later, plant some more so we can get harvest all through this growing season in the fall. Um, we do have some of our leafy greens in here still. This is probably gonna be the last week for us to have them in here before they start bolting, but I'm definitely enjoying them while I can. Um, but once those come out, we'll have more space also to add some more squash, tomatoes, probably some beans, um, and maybe even some more peppers. So for those of you who saw the video of Joe planting peanuts, his peanuts are doing so well. I'm so proud of him. They look great and they're growing really well. And our tomatoes that we planted from seed are doing really well as well. One thing I did want to share with you guys is this volunteer plant that we have over here. We think it possibly is a pumpkin because it's vining so much. And you can tell by the clusters of blooms, it's not your typical summer squash, but it is doing so well. It just popped up. And we left it because why not? It's in the garden anyway. And it is just thriving right now. I can't wait to see what it produces this summer. Next, let's go to the orchard and see what Jeremy is doing about the fire blight. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about fire blight and what it is. So fire blight is something that affects fruit trees and really any kind of fruit tree. So even like Bradford pears, while they are like ornamental and don't produce edible fruit, they're still considered a fruit tree because they're in the fruit tree family. So they can carry it. And that's actually where our fire blight came from. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And, and then we're gonna talk really quick about why it is so bad. So fire blight is gonna show up looking like this on your trees. So when your tree looks healthy, 
and you have all of a sudden dead tips like these guys, that is the sign that you've got fire blight. Now, unfortunately, there is nothing that you can do that's going to completely cure this thing. Our only hope at this point is to cut off all of these infected areas and then stay on top of treating at the right time of year next year to help prevent it. So treatment, what you gotta do is spray with a liquid copper, like a copper fungicide type thing, or there's some other things, but we try to do things as organically as possible and that copper is considered an organic treatment. So. You gotta spray when new growth is coming out and those flowers are starting to open because bees are the number one spreader of this horrible disease. So what they do is take pollen from one affected tree and bring it to another one and that in turn affects that tree. Also, that new growth is sensitive to it as well, but more so the flowers. So when those flowers start emerging, you wanna start treating now you do want to do this early, early morning before the sun starts hitting it because copper is like an oil. So, which means if you do it when the sun's hitting it, it will completely burn up those flowers. Also, you want to try to get it on there before the bees are present. Now, once that dries, it's not going to affect the bees. It's fine, which is one of the reasons why we like using it because it is safe for the pollinators as long as it's applied at the right time. So right now I'm going to go through and cut off all these dead tips and try to get it out of the trees. So another important note is you really don't wanna do chop and drop, meaning cut and just let the limbs fall on the ground and leave them there because if it's infected, it keeps it in the area. So we're gonna dispose of all of these tips that we cut off. All right, so when you're doing this, you're wanting to go farther back than just that infected area. So you don't wanna just cut like right here, even though there's new growth coming out here. I'm going way back here to make sure that we are going far enough back to hopefully get all this stuff out. Now, I just talked about not wanting to chop and drop and I am dropping them, but I'm gonna go back and pick them up. So the big thing is don't leave them on the ground. Now this is just a disease that is going to affect the tree. So if you wanted to, you could feed these to the livestock if they're gonna eat them. Um, it's not going to really do anything to them. You just, again, want to make sure that you are getting them far enough away from your orchard to where it's not going to affect future growth. Now this side is, backside to you guys, is pretty heavily affected, uh, probably because it came initially from our pear trees, which are on this side. Um, and unfortunately with this, you cannot really do selective pruning. So you've got to just basically cut what's dead and get it out and not worry about the shape. You know, where I am going back, I am looking at the buds and making sure that I'm cutting above a bud that's gonna grow in the right direction that I want it to go, which we talk more about that in our pruning video, which I will link right here, right now. So our official results are in on our comparison between the two breeds of meat chickens. We um, did a taste test and we weighed them all. So we have some results for you that we will share in our midweek video this week. Yeah, definitely ended up being a little more different yeah. than I thought and was yeah. expecting. So make sure you see that. Yeah. Highs and lows. Highs and lows. Let's Highs do them. Lows. You go first. Oh, my high, I think probably would be meeting John's family. Yeah. John's the guy staying with us. We got to meet his family. And that was neat. It was, yeah, it was really, it was really neat. We've heard a lot about him. Yeah. Great family. Yes. Uh, so I think that was probably my high. And then if you remember my high from last week, we actually had to cancel that. And so they yeah. are coming this weekend. So yes. once again. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's a looking forward to high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out last week's video and, and our highs and lows, and you'll you'll hear all about it. I'm not going to yeah. explain it again. Yeah. My low would be just not feeling really good. I uh, can't tell if, they're, if it's allergies or something else. Um, nothing major, but it is kind of causing a little bit of a restless sleep and stuff like that. So that would definitely be my low, working on knocking that out. Yeah. 
My high is probably, I have a couple highs. Um, Sayla got some flowers planted in our garden. She did. And which I, is right here yes, behind us. which is right behind us. I always love, I love watching the kids garden, of course. Yeah. But I also love the fruit of her labor. <laughs> I love the flowers that grow in our garden. It's different every year, obviously. It is. So it's, it's always fun to see what it's going to look like and what's going to produce. She has some really pretty dahlias I can't wait for. Um, but so that's my, one of my highs. My other high is that we, are fi- we have finally gotten our pool up so the kids can play in the pool. Yes. And maybe I'll Best. get a few quiet hours. <laughs> Best entertainment ever. Ever, yes. As long as they don't fight. <laughs> my low is probably just like a lot of confusion and misunderstanding at work just trying to get things kind of transitioned um this year's the transition year for, year for us so just trying to get everything figured out and kind of knocked out we're at the end stretch here yeah we have our show in a few weeks so just trying to figure out who's doing what and moving forward with that so it'll get there yeah and it'll be a great show. As it always. will be a great show. And the, the kids, kids will have, have fun. fun and that's what matters. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we thank you guys for joining us, for checking us out. Again, if you got any questions on anything that we talked about, be sure to leave them in the comments. Yeah. If you got anything else you want to say, leave those down there too. Just make it nice. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so as always, hope you guys have a great week and be blessed. Mm-hmm.